Hey guys, VBad here and welcome to episode 2 of the Beginner's Guide. At this point, you've probably worked your way up to tier 5, maybe tier 6 even. So, now what? There was a bunch of stuff I told you not to worry about until you got a little bit further on because you're just going to be skipping through planes, wham bam, all the way through up to probably tier 5. Maybe you got a little bit hung up on tier 4, but usually it doesn't take that long once you start to figure out how things work. If it took you a little bit longer, don't feel ashamed about that. That means that you had the opportunity to get a little bit more flying under your belt before you started running into the large swaths of really good players that are kind of in that veterancy status. You're going to see a lot more specialized aircraft from here on forward and a lot of really good players. So you're going to have to face a little bit of a steep learning curve. But all that time I told you not to worry about modules and equipment, now we're going to start looking at that stuff. So just to make things easy, let's say this is an aircraft I've already been working on. So we're going to put my equipment back on. But for the time being, I'm going to advise that when you want to look at your cockpit, with the exception of maybe ground attackers or bombers, you're almost always going to go for the gun sight. Go for the gun sight. It'll be some version of this, either a collimator or like a, something reticle. I don't what they're all called the point is is there's three different tiers of equipment you have the tier one through four is one grade of equipment and then tier five six and seven is another grade of equipment and then eight nine and ten have their own equipment what that essentially means is the price goes up and you can't transfer them to other aircraft now if i were to go and get my initial gun sight. It's going to be a pretty hefty cost, as you can see, which is why I didn't want you to waste a ton of credits early on buying this equipment to just have to sell it when you made it to tier five. This is going to, this, this equipment will stay with you all the way up through tier seven, including tier seven. And you can sell it afterwards to be able to get some credit. But when you buy this, you don't want to start enhancing it, okay? Just buy it the way it is. Don't 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 mess with it. Don't worry that your number is only 100 compared to the 400 or 406 I got over here for the gear score. This is going to be enough. For you. You'll be fine. You can overcome this through tactics opposed to just relying on overpowering the aircraft. So rather than doing that, like I said, I've already have this aircraft kitted out and I don't want to pay a bunch of credit to be able to swap it out. But gun sight, safe bet. Airframe, if you're in any type of fighter, you're almost always going to go with a lightweight wing frame. It's going to increase the maneuverability in turns, which means you're going to be able to get your guns on target more often. Yeah, there's a downside. It's going to increase the chance of getting critical damage to the wings or reduced hit points. But we're going to be using the maneuverability to try and stay out of the enemy's guns anyways. So... It's kind of a moot point. I mentioned it early on, but this isn't like World of Tanks or World of Warships where you can bounce shots. You're going to be taking hits. Your best bet is to be out of the field of fire, and high maneuverability is going to do that for you. Now, depending on the type of aircraft you have, you might be running a speed build or maneuverability build, or maybe a tank build. The tank builds are usually for your ground attackers and bombers, so you're really going to be stuck between two major choices. Either you're going to go for some type of a boost enhancement, which is going to decrease your overall boost time, but increase the effectiveness of that boost, which is your W key, or you're going to go for a full maneuverability build. Since I told you to go with the Spitfire, you're going to want to go full maneuverability build. You'll also note that we're not in a Spitfire. I opted not to throw in my Spitfire because it is specialized, and I don't want to add another layer of confusion at this point. We'll talk about specialization in another video. But for this time, this is going to be very similar to what you'll see for like your tier 5, tier 6 British Spitfire. Go with universal ammo, safe choice almost every time, engine cooler, pneumatic control assist, and first aid. These are your go-tos. You might be tempted to put on repair modules or engine restarter, and those are good safe bets to have. It just kind of reminds me of World of Tanks where you're like, well, I got to get my tracks back up. But this isn't that type of game, right? Like we said, you want to avoid getting hit. The pneumatic 
Assist is going to increase your maneuverability for 10 seconds. That means that if you're in a fight against an aircraft that's more maneuverable, you can go ahead and hit that 2 key and get yourself a nice bonus for about 10 seconds, hopefully being able to turn the advantage on the enemy. And it cools down every 90 seconds, so you can use it more and more often. So use these things early, use them as soon as you think you might need it, just use it, because it'll come back, it doesn't cost you to use it. Same thing with the boost cooler. The boost cooler, if you run out of boost, this will give you 10 seconds of free boost. You can just hold down the W for 10 seconds and it's all there for you to use. Or you can just let it regen on its own. It'll regen your boost five times faster than normal. These are nice consumables to have. We already know that by putting the gun sight on here, you're going to increase your pilot's chance of taking injury. So being able to get that pilot back up and shooting accurately is also going to be a benefit. Again, a 90 second cooldown. I want to talk a little bit about the universal ammo or just guns in general. You'll see here that this increases the chance to cause fire and inflict critical damage. There is a mechanic built into this game that the lower the caliber the guns are, the higher the chance that the guns are going to cause fire, but it's a lower chance to cause critical damage like wing damage, engine damage, knocking out pilots. So it's an inverse ratio, however, so the higher you get up in caliber, the lower the fire chance is, but the higher the critical damage chance is. So there's essentially going to be two grades of machine guns and two major grades of cannons. There's some nuance in here, of course, but you have light machine guns, you have heavy machine guns, you have 20 millimeter cannons or the equivalent, and then you got big old honking 30s and above. So with your light machine guns, which is what these uh, Browning 303s essentially are, uh, you're not going to be pumping out a ton of damage out there. Um, actually, the Browning 303s, I think, qualify as heavy machine guns, but you have a good fire chance. Meanwhile, the 20 millimeter cannons are going to give you a little bit more critical and a little bit more reach on the guns. So that's something to bear in mind. They are two different calibers of gun, but if you can get them on target, we get the best of both worlds with this current setup. This is more the guns you'll see on the Spitfire that you'll get at tier six. But again, I'm not going to show you my Spitfire because I feel like it's a little bit unfair at this point. Uh, for pilot skills, uh, I've reset this pilot skills in order to kind of emphasize what we want to do with them. Um, I'm always going to advocate that you guys grab firefighter skill. Why am I telling you to get the firefighter skill? Well, we are using the med kit in place of the fire extinguisher and the damage over time always stinks. So if you go ahead and enable firefighter skill, what's going to happen is when you roll your aircraft's wings, it will put out the fire of the air, uh, from the aircraft. That means that you don't actually need to use the fire extinguishers. So this will work out really effectively for a lot of your turn fighters especially. So without any further ado, let's take this aircraft into battle and talk a little bit about tactics while we play. Maybe we'll win, maybe we'll lose, maybe my son will come back into the room and tell me there's a bug in his room because this is the second time I had to do this recording, but we'll see how it goes. So, as a turn fighter, you need to know your role. Your aircraft is going to be a mid to low turn fighter in the Spitfire. So that means that you're not going to want to climb up really high and chase heavy fighters or chase bombers. You're going to want to kill multi roles. You're going to want to go after. Other light fighters, especially turny light fighters, because you want to kill them first because they're the biggest threat. And then maybe go after some ground attackers if there's the opportunity. The zones you're going to want to go after are going to be more centrally located because you're not as fast as the altitude fighters or the heavies. But you also have a very pivotal role in holding those sectors as well. So while you might be going to a central sector and not have the ability to go out and reach to the other areas, you can usually hold a sector very effectively with your turn capability. It's going to make it kind of a rat's nest for the enemy to go after. Since you don't have any air-to-ground ordnance anymore, since you're all light fighter, this means that you're going to have to spend a lot of time 
killing aircraft in order to get capture points. Sorry, I'm assessing the battlefield. Uh, we are not going to go to the military facilities. I'm actually kind of glad that we had this opportunity. We're not going to go to ours. Because the only aircraft to shoot down are going to be heavy defense aircraft. Those heavy defense aircraft are going to be really far up high. And like we just said, let's stay to mid altitude. There'll be three light fighters over here and two heavies. And they'll most likely drop down to engage us so we can play against them. I'm going to put my center dot right here. I'm holding the left mouse button to be able to turn and look. And I'm going to hit the F2 to indicate to my team that I want them to go to that sector. By sending them to that sector... Oop, we got a heavy on us. He's already taken out my tail. That stinks. Oh, this is what I get for talking and playing, huh, guys? But that sends my bot aircraft over to attack that other sector, which is what we were hoping for. We do have someone coming straight at us. Our tail eventually fixed itself. We're using a combo of that 20 and 50 cal or Brownings to be able to get a lot of damage out and get that critical fire started. I'm going to start heading over to their military facility now to try and deter them a little bit. Uh, the problem with the military facility, though, is you're going to see a dotted line appear out of that, and it's going to start capturing the zone automatically. So unless we can stop them, we're going to have a bit of a problem. Okay. Heading over to their facility now. We're going to try and do a bit of an interrupt. The enemy does have a bomber, which is why they were able to take that site so effectively. There is going to be a player in an altitude fighter over here. I'm going to go ahead and hit my boost cooler and kick my nose up so that way I can get up here and engage this Captain Kirk character. He doesn't see me coming up from underneath, so we're able to help our buddy out. And now we're going to come and attack their facility. I'm going to try and get back down to a lower altitude because, uh, again, I told you guys not to do what I just did. This is the most maneuverable aircraft, and it is a enemy team aircraft, so I decided to take that out first. And now we're going to go and look at engaging these heavies. I am kind of moving side to side because these flat cannons are going to predict our movements. So we're trying to stay a little bit unpredictable for their fire. Another one down. We're going to drop on this heavy, get on his tail. And that helped us get a little bit more capture. Even though that guy was out of the zone, if you kill a defense aircraft, no matter what, it's going to help with a capture. Help our allies out here. Normally I don't advocate shooting up ground targets, but... So close to capturing here. By taking out those guns, it's going to give us a little bit more of a chance. There is an enemy heavy up there. There's a Faka Wolf diving on me. That is the one that killed me earlier, that I killed earlier. Maybe he's a little bit angry about what I did to him. There we go. We managed to pick up the zone. That's going to give us a bit of an advantage advantage and capture and I'm using the boost cooler to try and get up to a higher altitude. We just picked up air supremacy. You should remember that from the first video. So we're going to start ticking away at 12 capture every second. And we're not doing too bad. We're actually out tiered. The enemy has or no, we're not out tiered. We're we're even killed. But the enemy does have a specialized aircraft. Mm, we don't on our team. And I think we only have two other players. P-43 and a P-38F. A 
Like I said, we can defend in our light fighters as well. So we'll stick over here. I don't want to go too far out of our comfort zone. We're building up a bit of a lead right now. I don't zoom in a lot, but you guys probably should scroll that mouse wheel forward, kind of see where the tracers are going. That'll be good for you. Altitude is key. We're going to let ourselves climb a little bit. Not too steep, about 20 degrees. You can see on the right-hand side here, 20 degrees is a good spot to be. Uh, I'm going to hit the F4 button. will actually indicate to players you would like them to attack an aircraft. And we're getting acknowledgement from that bot right there. Leveling off to get a little bit more airspeed here. And we're going to come up underneath the Hurricane. Now the Hurricane's got bigger firepower than us, but we're more maneuverable. So let's go ahead and let him slip by and engage this aircraft from an unfair fight. Oh, seems like there's a lot of people rolling in here. There is the player-controlled BF-109. Oh no, we got our wing, and he got us in the ram. Unfortunately, we didn't kill his aircraft. He is in a pretty stellar aircraft, actually, so we are going to hop back into it, and I'm probably going to end up going to the garrison to see if we can help out at all. Hopefully, I was able to damage Captain Kirk enough that somebody's able to take him out, because we're about to get air supremacy turned onto us, so let's see what we can do here. To try and even the score. Can I flip this zone on my own? I don't want to get engaged by heavy fighters again, so I'm going to dip my nose. I'm going to try and get a little bit of speed here. And there's a heavy diving on us. A little bit more of an advanced tactic, but we're going to charge at him so that way it limits the amount of time he can even put his guns on us. Engaging the defense aircraft. Currently Squall Lion. Okay. Hot Defenders here. Rolling around behind him. Never giving up. Always going to fight to the last. There we go. They no longer have air supremacy. We're getting ourselves a little bit too high. Let's go ahead and drop the nose. Fortunately, it looks like this is going to end up being a loss for us, but we played fairly well. Our personal score went well. If we did not get into that ram situation with the BF-109, we probably would have fared a little bit better. I think my eyes were bigger than my stomach on that one, as he obviously noticed I was coming up from under him. He learned his lesson from the last engagement and ended up getting on us. But... The point is, as long as you continue to post decent personal point scores and you're playing your role as an aircraft, there's only so much you can do to control the fight. You're not really at a position right now where you can essentially carry the battle, but you can do your role and doing your role effectively usually will end up working out in your favor and you're going to post a fairly decent win rate at this point, which will allow you to continue to progress through the aircraft. Uh, next, we'll probably end up talking about flighting up, finding some people to fly with and some people to teach you so that way you can get better on your get better with some players that are joining you. Because one of the things that's really nice about this game is that there is a fairly positive community compared to some of the other wargaming products that are out there. There's a lot of different clans out there that are willing to take in new players, teach them. In fact, uh, you know, shameless post for Ace. Ace is the clan that I ended up popping in with. Uh, because I wanted to help new people as they learn the ropes in the game because the more people that are playing, the bigger the player base, and the more fun it's going to be for everybody. So if you're looking for some clans to join, we'll talk about that in episode three, but do consider putting your name out there and talking to some of the other players and seeing if there's some people you just want to 
fly it up with for maybe a couple of matches and see how it goes because flying together is a huge part of this game as well. Anyways, enough about that. Hopefully you guys understand a little bit more about the equipment setup and the pilot skills, uh, but you're still early on in the game. So next episode, we'll talk about getting into some higher tiers, maybe playing with some different types of aircraft and their roles. And then we'll also talk about how to flight up with people and some of the mechanics involved for clan membership. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this battle as well as this video, and I'll check you on the next episode in this series. I'm marching to the